coming back to the basic principle of cymatics that when you have a sound and you have a membrane there must be a cymatic pattern that you can't see of course generally normally but in this case you know going back to the king's chamber sarcophagus and this membrane what i was doing was changing the frequency very very slowly um, and then watching for the sand grains which don't forget had just been sprinkled from a cappuccino chocolate shaker actually onto the surface of this membrane so i'm watching the sand grains right and, and then i'm changing the frequency at a particular volume level particular amplitude level watching them for movement now as soon as you see movement any kind of movement like a just a few little grains dancing around a little bit that's the time to increase the amplitude and to just tweak the frequency a little bit up or down until you maximize the height that these little sand grains are jumping and that's when just a little bit more amplitude and suddenly you will see this you know whatever the pattern is emerge on the membrane in this case literally uh, ancient egyptian hieroglyphs emerging so it's a kind of it's a very fun thing to do and there are obviously you know techniques to learn how to work with cymatics and i'd be you know very help, happy to help anyone um, into this field because it is a fabulous new field of science actually yes i believe it's a new earth profession of the future so it's so exciting that you're here and bringing it to us and you know when you said all that it made me think that it was kind of like the fountain of youth a cellular regeneration what have you found happening with our cells and the sounds com combining together are you noticing the fountain of youth noel well i would love to um <laughs> Be in that in that line, you know, for the fountain of youth, because I've got so much work that I want to do. Um, I will, you know, share a couple of aspects in relation to your question here about the fountain of youth. One of them is actually very, very important, and it isn't only about about youthfulness. It's also about inflammation in the body. Now, inflammation in the body of course is a very important aspect of our body's mechanism healing mechanism so you know don't think that inflammation is a bad thing it's not providing it is acute inflammation which is an extremely important part of the healing process natural process however of course uh chronic inflammation is an entirely different scenario and it really not anticipated by nature so when a person has chronic inflammation and of course it can be triggered by many different uh, uh, life events it causes usually chronic pain and one of the um, aspects of this which you know is very important to share with you all is that there is no pharmacological pill there's no substance that you can imbibe that will fix a situation where your body has chronic pain or chronic inflammation well the two things are of course linked together however researchers have discovered in recent times there are many really wonderful scientific papers on this uh, subject that i'm about to share with you that have discovered that by stimulating the vagus nerve of the body that chronic inflammation can be quite easily reversed, right? Now, this is really good news, but also relating to this, and this is coming back to your fountain of youth, Noel, uh, <laughs> that, that stimulation of the vagus nerve has also been shown to slow the rate at which we age. It has also been shown to uh, boost sexual function, um, and has many other wonderful attributes. So, you know, it's a, it's a really, it's a wonderful series of discoveries that have been made in relation to the vagus nerve. And let me just describe a little bit now about, you know, how this works and how we can all apply uh, vagal in stimulation to our bodies very easily and beautifully, actually. So essentially, the vagus nerve is the longest cranial nerve. It's the longest nerve in the body it when it leaves the brain stem 
it first branches off left and right to both ears. It goes to the tragus of the ears. This is this little flap of tissue that overhangs our auditory canal. And it doesn't just go to the tragus, actually it goes to various other parts of the ear, which is why our ears are so, you know, really tremendously sensitive to touch. And of course, it's one of the reasons why ears are sometimes thought of as an erogenous zone for the same reason. So this is the vagus nerve going straight to the ears, mainly to the tragus. And then it, from there, it, it immediately goes to the pharynx and the larynx. And then in a dual mode, it goes through the body to all of the major organs in the body. So it's innovating all of the organs. What does that mean? It means that signals are going from the brain to all of your organs and in reverse, organs are sending signals back to the brain via the vagus nerve, okay? Now, here's, here's the good news, which is that stimulating of the stimulation of the vagus nerve, of course, is really easy because of where it goes to. It goes to the tragus of the ears. So, for example, if we make our own vocal sounds, even speaking actually has been shown to stimulate the vagus nerve. And I know that some people like to talk a lot. So that's <laughs> a good thing. You know, social interaction, speaking, you know, a lot actually does help to stimulate the vagus nerve. But much better than that is singing or humming even has a really wonderful stimulation on the vagus nerve, not only because the vagus nerve is connected directly to the larynx, because so therefore, obviously, as you're making the sound vibrations, it's literally going into the vagus nerve. But then, of course, your vocal sound is going out into the world as a sound bubble, which then reflects off the wall, say, if you're in a, a space, you know, I'm in the lab here now, <clears throat> sounds coming back to me. I can hear my own voice, of course. And it's the same for anyone that's singing or humming. Their voice is being reflected back to them from the walls of their room, their chamber, um, and therefore stimulating the tragus of the ears. So it's a secondary way that when we make our own sounds, we are stimulating the vagus nerve. But then... 